Hello friends, this video on plant growth and development part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us start our discussion with the first plant hormone that is auxin. So what does the term auxin means? Now auxin is a Greek word which means to grow. Now since it is a growth promoting hormone, so it will allow the plant to grow. That is why it has been named auxin. That is to grow. Okay, so it is a growth promoting plant hormone as I said. Now the question is, what kind of chemicals are auxins? Because just now I told, right, these are nothing but chemical messengers or chemical substances which are present inside a plant. So what are these chemicals? What kind of chemicals are we talking about? So if you think of their chemical structures, they are something like this. Indole acetic acid, which is often abbreviated as IAA. So you can see their chemical ring structure, how they look like. Indole butyric acid, which is abbreviated as IBA. Again, you can see the structure. Naphthalene acetic acid, which is abbreviated as NAA. 2,4-dichlorophenoxy acetic acid. So if you see, these are the structures of auxins. It's not very simple, but yes, they are important for plants. So out of these also, these two are directly isolated from plants. So they are naturally occurring auxins. So they are isolated from plants. So you can get them directly from plant parts. Whereas these two, that is NAA and 2,4-D, these are synthetic auxins. That is, they are artificially prepared auxins. Why are they prepared? Why do we need to prepare uh, auxins artificially? That you will get to know when you know the uses of auxins. Now, since they are so useful, so in order to use it for agricultural purposes, they are prepared artificially and then they are known as synthetic auxins. Okay. So we will now talk about the discovery of auxins. How were auxins discovered? So there is a very, there are a set of interesting experiments performed you know, by, to, by the famous scientist Charles Darwin and his son Francis Darwin. They together performed a series of experiments and then concluded you know, this uh, growth promoting substance present in a plant and it was named later as auxin. So we will now try to see the experiment which they performed and how they arrived at this. Now you will see that experiment is absolutely interesting. So with what was the substance that they took for experimentation? They experimented with coleoptiles of canary grass. Now if you have forgotten what is a coleoptile then let me quickly remind you. Coleoptile is the covering of the plimule. Now, I hope you all remember what is a plimule. This is nothing but the structure of a seed. So when you actually put a seed inside the soil and it starts to germinate, what is there inside the seed? You have the cotyledons which are nothing but the seed leaves. So these two are the cotyledons because I have taken the example of a dicot seed. So these two are the cotyledons or the seed leaves which store the food which is required for the seed to turn into a plant. This small root like structure is radical which will later develop into root. This small shoot or the young shoot is plimule which will later develop into the shoot. So plimule will develop into shoot later, radical will develop into root later. Right? So now this plimule and radical they are like very small and very delicate. So they need to be covered in order to ensure protection. So the covering of the plimule is known as coleoptile. Right? So they experimented with coleoptiles of canary grass. That is they actually used the tip of the shoot. That's what you can say. Right? Plimule is the young shoot and the covering of the plimule is coleoptile. So the tip of the plimule or the tip of the shoot. Right? So this is what they used. Now the story is what they observed and what experiments did they perform. So we will have a look at that. So the first experiment which they performed was quite simple one. What they did was they took the coleoptile of canary grass. So here this represents the coleoptile or you can consider it as the tip of the shoot. Right? So this was the tip of the shoot. What did he do? In one scenario, 
he placed it under the sun. So the sun was just overhead. So the light was falling evenly balanced on the coleoptile. So it is like you can see the, since the sun is just over it, so the light is falling evenly on both sides. So it is receiving the light equally. So each part of the coleoptile is receiving the light equally. In the second case, what he did, the same coleoptile, but it, he kept it in such a way that the light falls on it sideways. So now the light is not equal inside the coleoptile. Right? So the light is in a slant way. Now what did he observe? He observed that in the first case, the shoot was growing vertically upward, straight upwards, no bending, nothing. So it was just growing straight up. Fair enough. Because for growth you need this sunlight, right? But in the second case, to his surprise, he found that the tip was bending or the shoot was rather kind of bending towards the direction of the sun. Now this was interesting for him. He was wondering what made the shoot bend towards sunlight. I mean how is the sunlight, what is the, that object inside the shoot which is getting influenced by the sunlight that it is bending towards the light. Right? Now this process now we know it as we know it as phototropism that is bending of a plant towards sunlight so okay forget about that now we are looking at how auxines were discovered so he kept on thinking about this but he got to know that there has to be something inside the shoot because of which it bends towards light so now in order to get more information he performed the next set of experiment so in his next set of experiments, what he did was he cut the tip of the coleoptile. The tip of the shoot was cut. Okay, right. And then it was seen that it was growing straight up. So now please remember that in this case, the light is coming sideways. So in the previous slide, I showed you that when the light was coming sideways, it should have bent towards sunlight. But now since the tip has been removed, it is going straight. So what does that prove? That proves that something is there in the tip because of which it was bending towards the sunlight. Right? But in order to become more sure of this uh, uh, conclusion, what he did was he tried another thing. He took an opaque cover through which light cannot pass and he covered the tip of the shoot with that cover right so now light cannot reach the tip of the shoot and what did he observe he observed that even this grew straight that means again this also proved the same thing that there is something in the tip of the shoot because of which it was bending towards light to get more assurance on this conclusion he again tried one more thing he again covered the tip of the shoot but now he covered it with a transparent cap. So when it was covered with a transparent cap, light was still able to enter the shoot tip. And this time he observed that yes, it is bending towards light. So this added more confidence to what he was trying to conclude. He got to know that okay, there is something, something mysterious inside the shoot tip. Again, in the last case, what he did was he took a, a kind of an opaque substance and he put it not on the tip but on the middle area. So he left the tip open just to make sure that if the middle portion of the shoot is playing a role in bending. But this time he saw that it was bending towards the sun. Why? Because the tip was open. The tip was still exposed to sunlight. So with these four experiments, he concluded finally that there is something inside the shoot tip because of which the stem bends towards the direction of light. Right? So based on the two experiments, two first two sets of experiment uh, which he performed, he concluded that tip of the shoot was sensing light. So there was something inside the tip which was able to sense light.
and therefore it was showing different behaviors. So they performed the next set of experiments. So by now it was clear that there was something in the shoot tip because of which the stem was bending towards sunlight. So now in order to get more idea on what exactly it was, this next experiment was performed where in the first case, a permeable membrane was inserted between the shoot tip and the rest of the plant. And in the second case, a non-permeable membrane was inserted between the shoot tip and the lower part of the stem. So if you see here, this is a permeable membrane. What is a permeable membrane before that? Let me just confirm if you remember that. Permeable membrane is any such membrane which allows particles to pass through it. And non-permeable is something which doesn't allow anything to, to pass across it. So that is the difference between permeable and impermeable, uh, non-permeable. Okay, so now again the light was uh, made to fall from the sideways uh, on both these coleoptiles. And interestingly, what was observed? It was observed that in the first case, there was a bend. So with the permeable membrane, it bent. But with the non-permeable membrane, it did not bend. So what did this prove? This proved that from the earlier experiments, it proved that there is something in the tip. From this experiment, it was proved that there is something in the tip which is passing on to this region. Right? And when that something passes on to this region, only then it bends towards sunlight, right? Because in this case, it, that whatever was there, whatever something is there in the tip could not pass to this portion. So it did not bend, but here it could bend. So another piece of information was gathered that, okay, whatever is there at the shoot tip, that that is the cause for this bending, but that doesn't happen at the shoot tip. So that goes down to this portion of the stem and what is this portion from our knowledge on the different phases of growth we know that this portion is the elongation phase right so it was found that there is something here in the shoot tip which goes into the elongation phase and as a result of that the bending occurs okay so now the final experiment which gave all I mean, which filled all the gaps in between. So the last set of experiments which he did was something like this. So he removed the shoot tip from all the samples. Okay. Now what he did was, now since he knew from the past three experiments that there is something mysterious inside the shoot tip. So what he did was, he took some cubical structures, some gelatinous cubical structures and he made that material to be absorbed in these structures. So now each of these cubes absorbed the material which was present inside the shoot tip, right? Now what was done was these cubes were placed instead of the shoot tip. So instead of placing the shoot tip, these cubes were placed. And just see how strategically were they placed. In the second case, it was placed at the center. Third case, it was placed aligned to the left. And on the last one, it was placed aligned to the right. And in the first one, if you see, the color is different. That is because it did not absorb anything. So it doesn't have any material inside it. And now the sun is overhead for each of them. Now what was observed? Then what happened was whatever material was there, it passes down, right? So whatever was there, it passes down. So in this case, since it is placed centrally, so it passes down uniformly throughout the stem. In this case, since it is located towards uh, left, so the material also passes towards the left side. Here also, it is towards right, so the material gets concentrated towards the right side. Now it was seen that in presence of sunlight, the growth was something like this. The first one in which there was no absorbed material at all, it went straight up, okay. In the next one, where the absorbed material was there and it was present uniformly throughout the stem, that also went straight up. But in the third case, it was seen that it bent. 
so that means in the third case also the material was there but it was not uniformly distributed so it bent and in the last case again it was seen that it bent and now the interesting thing to observe was that in both the third and the fourth cases the bending was on the side which had lower concentration of the material which came out of this tube right so now doing this experiment he got a lot of idea about what was happening so now he concluded that the that something which is present in the shoot tip is a growth promoting substance some substance which promotes growth so now in the second case when that growth promoting substance is present uniformly everywhere so all the sides of the stem is growing uniformly so it is going straight up but in the third case when the growth promoting substance is present only on this side so this side is growing more and this side is growing less so when one side is growing more and the other side is going less what will happen it will tend to bend let us suppose if you have a something like this now this side is growing more and this side is growing less so what will tend to happen when it keeps on growing like this it will tend to bend and that is what is happening here that it is tending to bend in this side also since the growth promoting substance was here so this side was growing more and this side was growing less that's why it was bending on this side so this is what he concluded after performing so many experiments so these series of experiments gave him the final conclusion that there was some material that impacted growth and it was present on the tip of the shoot and it was being passed from the tip towards the elongation region of the shoot because it is the elongation region where the actual uh, lengthening of the shoot takes place so in that elongation region only the cells will elongate and therefore the length will actually increase so even if you have a growth promoting substance at the tip it is not going to help it has to reach the elongation region of the shoot also he concluded that the bending occurs due to uneven distribution of the growth material now if it is distributed uniformly then all the parts of the stem will grow at uh, the same rate but if it is concentrated more on one side then it will grow more on that side and as a result bending will take place so this is how this growth promoting hormone was discovered and later on it was named as auxin auxin the term a greek term which meant to grow so this was how auxins were discovered isn't it interesting right so the series of experiments you see how scientists approach uh, to find out something to find out something which is not known thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.